Yes, I think we are in live broadcast. Welcome to Real Turkey Channel. This is Atila Eşalada, your loving, caring, tender host. We were experimenting with a new studio program, which would presumably improve the visual quality, though the content is beyond improvement. This is why I'm slightly delayed. Today, we're going to talk about Turkish economy in light of new data released by uh, Turkey Statistics Agency, Turkstat. The data covers March-April period. Some of it is just too outdated to be of any use but others do give us an indication of where the economy was before the outbreak of COVID-19 started and where we're heading. Uh, and uh, I titled this video, The Rot in the Economy Started Before the Disease, because uh, in particular, the employment data, which dates back to February, shows that economic decline has become endemic and it is going to get worse during the, the epidemic and there is really very little hope that the Turkish economy will improve in the second half of the year. Uh, actually, this is a counterpoint to almost all the investment bank reports from my domestic colleagues, as well as from esteemed international investment banks that I've read, which claim Turkey is poised to make a quick recovery. It may not have a V shape, but certainly it's going to be perhaps the shape of a Nike symbol. Uh, in other words, a quick bounce to levels just a smidgen below where we were before the crisis. And using this data, I would like to explain why this is not a possibility. The February employment data was disastrous. The unemployment rate, both overall as well as non-farm unemployment, declined slightly, I think a tenth of a percentage point or so, and youth employment declined by 0.5% uh, or so. But this matters little. What matters, what is really scary in the data is that labor force participation declined by two percentage points vis-a-vis -vis the same month of the next, last year. For those of you who are from the United States and follow economic reports, we would know that for Fed, uh, as well as the unemployment rate and monthly employment gains, labor force participation is one of the most important indicators of the health of the labor market. Uh, advanced economies try to jack up their labor force participation ratios. The more people active and working, the higher the taxes, the more disposable income. In Turkey, unfortunately, exactly the, I'm really sorry, I need to adjust myself, exactly the opposite is happening. A lot of people are becoming discouraged from looking for jobs simply because they have convinced themselves that such jobs are not available. And of course, if you have a declining labor force participation ratio, you have several problems. A, long-term unemployment, which is structural rather than cyclical, and it is a problem that's very difficult to address with economic policies such as fiscal or monetary stimulus or targeted incomes policies or, or, or you know, the job encouragement programs. Two, of course, to the extent you have, to the extent you have fewer working people, you have less people drawing wages and salaries, thus lower consumption. To me, uh, this is the most concrete evidence of uh, the economy having entered the tailspin before we have seen the first cases of COVID-19. Turkey admitted to having an epidemic sometime around mid-March, I believe. My memory doesn't usually serve me right. 
and the weekend lockdown started towards the end of the March. But the impact on economic output was horrendous. The industrial production in, in March declined 2% uh, year on year and 7.1% month on month. The month on month figure is very important and the decline is really eye catching simply because the lockdowns and social distancing measures didn't apply to most of the factories. They were supposed to report if any of their workers were corona positive in antibody tests and halt production, but you know how developing nations are. <laughs> so uh, most of them were supposedly still in the, the process of production, but uh, even then uh, the decline is 7% a month. We have May uh, manufacturing industry PMI data, which shows that uh, PMI declined to the lowest point of the series, which is something like five years old. So another 7% month on month would not surprise me. Furthermore, Turkstat also collects data on the major sectors of the economy. Uh, retail, services, construction, etc., etc., And the total turnover of these sectors, again, on the production side, has declined by 9% in March already. Now, in April, industrial production, as I've said, as well as these turnover indices would report much worse results simply because there were more days in lockdown but more importantly consumer behavior changed uh, we have consistent data from surveys tracking people's view and opinions about this outbreak first obviously as everywhere else people didn't take it too seriously and then we have seen a strong segmentation of Turkish population into two groups. Roughly two thirds became extremely cognizant of the dangers of social interaction and locked themselves into their houses or went to working from home type of arrangements to the extent it's possible. Whereas roughly one third uh, still didn't care. They either thought God protected them or they thought that wearing a mask and disinfecting your hands frequently would spare them the agony of the disease. And uh, these people uh, continue to consume. In fact, the day shopping centers opened, 11th of May, there were long queues. And I watched a few TV broadcasts where the journalist or broadcaster asks the person waiting in line, what are you going to buy? And the person says, nothing. I'm just bored at home and I'm you know, just going to go mall walking or whatever the expression is. Um, this is the, the, the problem uh, with the Turkish economy. Of course, those who refuse to understand that short of a complete lockdown and complete social isolation, nothing is going to stop this outbreak, uh, they are going to continue spreading the virus. According to one member of the National Science Council, there are at least 400,000 asymptomatic patients in Turkey, none of which are being traced or isolated. So they are merrily spreading the virus as soon as uh, we lift the intercity travel bans open the malls and open the barbers and hairdressers. The other two thirds are not going to consume. They are going to shy away from any kind of uh, social interaction, tourism, dining out, visiting movie theaters, etc. for a long time. This is the kind of behavior we observe everywhere. 
In fact, a rule of thumb seems to be developing. Uh, within a month of lockdowns being ended or the normalization process officially started, the production side, the supply side of the economy recovers 80% of its capacity or, or, or its ability to produce. Whereas consumption lags far behind. For instance, according to Moody's, in Europe, one third of consumption has evaporated because of the fear of the coronavirus. Uh, in the United States, I don't know the data, but I look at confidence indicators, consumer confidence, comfort indicators. They are declining, not very sharply, but they are. In Turkey, uh, May consumer confidence index by Bloomberg HT, which has nothing to do with the English language Bloomberg, uh, has declined to series lows, I believe, or to 10 year lows. So there is really no uh, demand for the consumers to go out there and to shop for big ticket items. We already see that in April, house sales, which declined by 55% year on year, and April and May car sales, which are down by, I'm waving my hands, double digits. Uh, in other words, uh, even if they are not under shelter at home regulations or instructions, people are extremely shy to visit galleries or to go home shopping with their favorite real estate agent and that uh, causes uh, one of the main problems with the Turkish economy. Now the government, Mr. Erdogan and his cabinet ministers had a meeting last week over video conference and they have decided that they will go out for a V-shaped recovery. This is why Turkey is normalizing way before the case numbers have declined to acceptable levels. Let me give you figures. Only yesterday we had 1,600 cases, 1,600 some, something odd number. And the health minister apparently said, because I didn't listen to his you know, press conference, I, I read it from uh, another reliable source, that the R0, the contagion ratio or the contagion coefficient in Turkey is still 1.56. Now, to provide counter examples, in UK it's 0.7. Obviously, these are rough estimates. And we still have deaths. And Prime Minister Johnson is extremely cautious about lifting the restrictions. In Germany, renormalization didn't start before R0 declined to 0.7. And unfortunately, once the economy opened, this is last week's data, it briefly jumped over 1 to 1.4, 1.04 or 1.05. I don't know what it is today. But even countries which, which are fairly developed and almost exclusively go by medical advice, it is very difficult to express the contagion ratio below one. And it is extremely dangerous in the sense that the outbreak will repeat to start normalization uh, when the R0 coefficient is significantly higher than one. Now, we are going to get uh, the first patient data at the end of the month whether shopping malls have increased the contagiousness of the disease. Remember, shopping malls opened on 11th, along with barbers and hairdressers. Uh, the incubation period of the virus is roughly 14 days. So around 20th to 25th, uh, we should look for a change in the trend of case numbers. I hope that they won't increase, but my opinion, not as a medical professional, but as someone who has studied statistics, is that case numbers will increase. In particular, 
we are receiving alarming reports, not from Istanbul, but from Anatolia, that several barbers refuse to be tested or when they are tested, for instance, in the city of uh, Burdur, 26, 24 out of 46 barbers tested positive for Corona after they opened their shops. It's sort of a case of too late, too little. And at the end of the month, we're opening our tourism facilities. Obviously, the government takes almost extreme measures to make sure that people don't uh, spread the disease to each other. Everything is going to be disposable. Uh, the tables will be placed at least two meters apart. There would be no smorgasbord or open buffet, as it is called in some countries. The food will be delivered by waiters wearing, you know, long latex gloves uh, or medical gloves. I'm sorry, latex gloves is is a different issue. We'll 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 we'll, we'll address later. Uh, nevertheless, uh, many of the hotel owners think these measures uh, are either too expensive or really not practical to implement. Uh, and then, of course, there is the issue of even if you open these facilities, whether anybody would come. Uh, most of the EU nations are reluctant to send their citizens abroad. The two other main sources of tourists, Russia and Iran, are at different stages of the outbreak, but they are very unlikely to send tourists. And if they do, whether we should accept them uh, is which I would answer in the negative. Which means that uh, the turnover indices, that is the amount of money businesses are making over summer months, are not going to improve even if we completely normalize the economy, that is, even if we lift all the restrictions. Why? Let me repeat. A, international experience as well as some survey data from Turkey shows that two-thirds of the public have become gun-shy about COVID-19. And no matter what the governments say or health authorities say, they are very unlikely to go back to their consumption levels prior to the crisis. Two, the mainstay of Turkish economy in summer months, tourism, is very likely to have an extremely poor season. Some domestic tourism, very little foreign tourism, but in general, probably 75% of the capacity will be idle. And now, that brings us to the final problem, which is the loans. In many countries, the state relief consists of cash aid, loans, as well as direct transfers uh, of cash to small and medium-sized companies. In Turkey, the cash aid is very little. Most of the aid is in the form of cheap loans, which will have to be repaid in three or six months. And then you do the math. I mean, most of these companies have taken out their loans in March, April, May period, so they'll have to be paid in autumn months, with what cash turnover? They will not have made any money over the summer months to pay these loans off. And the loans, the, the, the increase in loans are not small. Since the beginning of the year, Turkey's entire loan stock increased by 20%. At an annualized rate, that's like 65%. So in particular, corporates are taking out loans at every opportunity. And I just read a report by Turk Rating, Turkish Rating Agency. As of May, the non-performing loans, <clears throat> I'm really sorry, in the Turkish system plus the share of distressed loans, which are likely to become non-performing, are 10% of the total portfolio, or roughly 60% of paid-in capital. Now, assume a scenario 
where these loans made in 2020 come due, but they're not being repaid. The banks will run out of money to make new loans. And when the economy has left all of its problems behind, that's the COVID scare and uh, a bad tourism season, and is ready uh, to, to go roaring, the most important ingredient of an economic recovery, which is bank loans, will not be present because banks will be loaned out. Uh, this is largely the doing of a poor economic policy, uh, the government not understanding the risks of uh, COVID, and the government spending its ammunition in terms of fiscal and monetary policy too early before uh, they are needed, which is the time when you have suppressed the outbreak and the economy needs some pump priming. Remember, there is, and Paul Krugman has said that as well, there is a major difference between economies like Turkey, India, Brazil, etc., and United States, Germany, and UK. The latter countries can expand fiscal policy as much as they want to because they can borrow endless amounts in their own currencies in a world which is looking for high-quality, safe assets like UK gilts, German boons, or American government bonds. Turkey and the first category of nations are not in that list. Their ability to borrow and fiscal policy is extremely limited. And when it comes to monetary policy, the current policy rate is, I think, 8.75%. Uh, and the current CPI inflation is about 11%. So, I think I am justified in saying that further restrict, further easing of monetary policy is very likely to lead to further inflation or to a currency crisis. Drought has started before the epidemic, but it will probably continue after the epidemic, assuming the epidemic will be brought under control. And all of these are very shaky assumptions. This has been another live broadcast of Real Turkey Channel by your loving, caring, tender presenter Attila Yeshilada. Hopefully, as of next week, we will have better quality and some charts because we're trying to install, um, you know, a virtual studio. I I don't know what it is. People are trying to install things, and they tell me that all 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 will be good, old man. Just stay where you are. Thanks for watching us, and if you like it, please do share, and stay home and stay healthy. Bye-bye now.